Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of the literature. I am Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion. This poetry discussion comes to us from Adrian Rich, Diving Into the Wreck. The poem itself reads as such. First, having read the book of myths and loaded the camera and checked the edge of the knife blade, I put on the body armor of black rubber, the absurd flippers, the grave and awkward mask, I am having to do this not like Cousteau with his assiduous team aboard the sun-flooded schooner, but here, alone. There is a ladder, the ladder is always there, hanging innocently close to the side of the schooner. We know what it is for, we who have used it. Otherwise, it's a piece of maritime flaw, some sundry equipment. I go down, rung after rung, and still the oxygen immerses me. The blue light, the clear atoms of our human air. I go down, my flippers cripple me. I crawl like an insect down the ladder. And there is no one to tell me when the ocean will begin. First the air is blue, and then bluer, and then green, and then black. I am blacking out, and yet my mask is powerful. It pumps my blood with power. The sea is another story. The sea is not a question of power. I have to learn alone to turn my body without force in the deep element. And now it is easy to forget what I came for among so many who have always lived here, swaying their crenellated fans between the reefs and besides. You breathe differently down here. I came to explore the wreck. The words are purposes, the words our maps. I came to see the damage that was done and the treasures that prevail. I stroke the beam of my lamp slowly along the flank of something more permanent than fish or weed. The thing I came for, the wreck and not the story of the wreck, the thing itself and not the myth, the drowned face always staring toward the sun. The evidence of damage worn by salt and sway into this threadbare beauty. The ribs of the disaster curving their assertion among the tentative hunters, haunters. This is the place, and I am here. The mermaid whose dark hair streams black. The merman in this armored body. We circle silently about the wreck. We dive into the hold. I am she. I am he. Whose drowned face sleeps with open eyes, whose breasts still bear the stress, whose silver, copper, vermeil cargo lies, obscurely inside barrels half wedged and left to rot. We are the half-destroyed instruments that once held to a course, the water-eaten log, the fouled compass. We are, I am, you are, by cowardice or courage, the one who find our way back to this scene carrying a knife, a camera, a book of myths in which our names do not appear. So Adrian Rich, um, among poets is, well, if you want to talk about myth, is something of legend. Um, she has a pamphlet that is oft published i think it's either i think it's what is poetry it's either what is poetry or on poetry i can't remember precisely um but certainly someone who is well known and for the life i've read what is poetry i believe it's what is poetry you have to check me on that i believe it's what is poetry for the life of me, I don't know, I don't know why um, she's well known. Um, <laughs> I don't, who is this poem for? That's what I want to know. Who is this poem for? And not in the sort of um, mark and heel and baby face type terminology that is often associated with uh, literature for whom there is a direct audience. 
I don't mean that. Here, okay, so let's let's talk about tone. Let's talk about tone. <clears throat> What's the tone of this poem? To me, it comes across as preachy, which, hey, if you can pull off preachy as a tone, pull off preachy as a tone, by, by all means. There are times where Langston Hughes comes across fairly preachy, but man, does he get it done. There is also an air of almost being a student here. And observation for the sake of observation. A Emily Dickinson pulls that off all day, every day. Um, but here's something I want to talk about. There is a ladder. The ladder is always there, hanging innocently close to the side of the schooner. We know what it is for. We who have used it. We who have used it. We know what it is for. Two stanzas away from this. Three stanzas away from this. Our speaker is kerfuffled so terribly. And now it is easy to forget what I came for among so many who have always lived here. Is our speaker the individual for whom the ladder on the side of the schooner is just commonplace? Hey, we know what it's for, baby. This is what we do. And if so, how is it that simply stands us away? Uh, we get the phrase, the next stanza ends in the phrase, I crawl like an insect down the ladder, and there is no one to tell me where the ocean will begin. Okay, I, I mean, I guess that's... Pro so I did a little bit of work on a, a roof after graduating college. Um, and that transition between roof and ladder, you know, you got the roof, you got the ladder. That transition space, very difficult. Very difficult I, if I were writing about that experience, would write about that experience in the way that it was difficult for me because I never got used to it. There was no one to tell me where the roof ended and the ladder began. I am not counting myself among the ultimately um, practiced roofers ultimately talented house painters. The speaker here seems to waffle back and forth as to whether or not they are, and I, I think the speaker identifies as a she, even though the speaker says, I am she, I am he. Uh, the original sort of um, personification that they find is the mermaid. So I'm, I'm going to refer for the rest of this um, poetry discussion to the speaker as a she. She waffles back and forth between claiming authority and claiming student status. Just trying to learn, right? So what I mean when I say who's the audience here, is when we're examining that tone, the audience, whoever's reading it, what is it we're trying to get out of it? Now, for something like poetry, especially poetry in the modern world, there's no real audience audience. Whoever's reading it, that's the audience, <clears throat> right? Not like movies. There is a target audience for movies. A movie is made for a specific type of person. Anyone else who wants to enjoy it, that's great. But we are counting on women 35 to 45 watching this movie. <clears throat> Poetry, on the other hand, 
and to an extent, literature in general, insofar as literature is the capital L, literature in general, poetry specifically, the reader, the audience, is not pinpointed by the poem, but is malleable to the poem. So, when reading Bukowski, the reader has to assume the role of understanding the speaker that is Chanasky. When reading Robert Frost, it is incumbent upon the reader to adjust a little bit and understand what a crotchety old man would say. In that way, I think that this poem is problematic for the audience because for, what are we getting out of it? What are we putting into it? Um, obviously, hey, this argument could be made about every piece of literature ever written. You want to say uh, Hamlet. Who got anything out of Hamlet? You were asleep when you had to read it in class. Okay, fine. Yeah. There is an amount of buy-in. There is a something, something close to suspension of disbelief that has to be permitted to the literature in order that the literature may make any given actual impact on the reader. I don't know what our speaker is actually claiming here. If I could use examples that I've already used, Emily Dickinson is very good at pointing at things in the natural world and giving them some metaphysical sort of um, tinge. If you were coming in the fall, I'd roll the months up in balls and lay them in my drawer. I just dis screw the time. I want you. Bukowski is very good at taking the nastier elements of the world and giving them some poetic justice. I'm a dirty old man, and I smoke cigars, and I drink a lot of beer, and I even get in drunk fights once in a while, but there's this bluebird in my heart. And I don't want anybody to know he's there. There's something there to be taken. And I just use those two poets because those are two of my favorite poets. I don't know what's in this poem to be taken. I don't know what it is that the speaker is claiming. I don't know who it is that the speaker is claiming to be. And I don't know what in Christ's manifest we are, I am, you are, by cowardice or courage, the one who find our way back to this scene, carrying a knife, a camera, a book of myths in which our names do not appear. I'm open to it being explained to me. I'm willing to learn, but I don't know. So I read, I wish I could find it. I can't find it. I looked for 10 minutes through my books. I can't find, um, I think it's what is poetry. I've read it three, four times. Every other time I read it, I fall in love with some piece of it. Yeah, this right here, this paragraph. This stuff is the stuff, man. And then I'll read it again and realize, no, there's nothing there. It's all garbage. It's gobbledygook. But then I'll read it again. I'm like, okay, well, you buy in a little bit. You, all you got to do is buy in just a little bit. And all of a sudden, so much more of this makes sense. And then I read the stuff that even just the stuff that I highlighted, and it doesn't make any sense. I might have given it away. 
I might have given it away. I might have given it to someone who was writing sort of fluffy type poetry at the time. That might have been what I did with it. It might be gone. All the same, to me, there are quotes in this poem that I absolutely love. There are pieces in here I never imagined seeing the word sundry in a poem. I love that it's there. Um, where is it here? The thing I came for, the wreck and not the story of the wreck, the thing itself and not the myth, the, dr the drowned face always staring toward the sun. I love that little portion. I love it. It's great. In fact, in Ezra Pound type fashion, I think maybe that's the whole poem. Cut the rest of it. And hey, who am I? This poem, I'm coming across this in a book called Literature that I had to spend $90 on when I was in college. $90 I had to spend on this damn thing, and this poem is in it. What do I know? I'm not in it. My writing's not in it. Surely Adrian Rich knows better than me. But, that said, I sure would like someone to explain it to me. If you like this sort of thing, you like poetry discussions, you like poetry in general, maybe you're here in the comments section arguing with me, calling me a twit right now, consider hitting that like button. Not because you liked the video, but for the effort, okay? And if you were here by chance but not design and were not planning on watching one of my videos, consider hitting the subscribe button and coming back for more literature. Not all my poetry discussions are this way. Um, and I hope to see you back for the next poetry discussion, poetry review, uh, short story discussion, short story review, novel read-along, whatever it is that I'm doing here on this channel.